I'm coming to you today from the airport. I'm waiting out for my flight and I wanted to record a quick video because I'm going to be away all weekend uh, and I won't have a chance to record and edit a proper video so I'm just recording one for you now and I'm just going to do this all in one take because I don't have any way to edit it. I don't have any um, way to add audio so I'm sorry the microphone uh, the audio quality is going to be bad for this one. Um, but I do think it's important to get this off my chest while it's still fresh in my mind. I was recently in uh, accident and emergency, A&D, uh, in a NHS hospital in the UK. And I think as a lot of people have experienced in the UK, going to A&D is a, um, a really good way to, uh, to kindle some, uh, some hatred for the, um, the NHS, the National Health Service service here in the UK. Um, as you probably know already, we have a uh, universal free um, healthcare in the UK. Um, that's what the NHS is, it's the way of paying for everybody's um, uh, treatments in the UK. The, if you, I, don't, I really don't know what it's like to go to um, the emergency room, as they call it in the US, or um, any kind of hospitals in other countries. Uh, so, to be honest, there's not much to compare my experience to, but um, I think everybody in the UK has probably gone to accidental emergency at least once in their life, and from my understanding, the experience is universally awful. Um, like I said, there's not really much to compare to, of course, uh, compared to historical standards, we have a great standard of, of care for um, when, we, uh, when we have certain ailments, but the it certainly seems to be a lot worse than it has to be. Uh, the waiting times are you know, in excess of uh, you know, a few hours at least. And the waiting rooms, the, the quality of the places you wait and the places you're treated are extremely poor by modern first world, world, first world standards. Um, if you compare it, for instance, to the airport I'm sitting in right now, the, the waiting room of the uh, A&D is absolutely appalling. Um, I'm, I'm fine, by the way. <laughs> don't, don't worry about me. I'm actually um, I'm okay. But they just sent me to um, A&D as a as a precaution. I didn't really need to be there. But um, just uh, to come back to the waiting room, it was. It, I don't live in a bad area of the UK. I live in a, a fairly rich area, but to, that seems to make absolutely no difference to the quality of the hospital. Um, just the uh, um, just dirty, messy, uh, really uncomfortable. Um, compare that to the airport I'm sitting in now, where there's lots of space, there's places you can charge your phone, devices, there's watering fountains, really clean toilets, clean floors. Just, uh, you know, of course, nobody likes having to wait, but it is, uh, you know, it's much nicer to wait here in this uh, lovely, clean, spacious airport with, uh, you know, lots of facilities. Uh, than it is to wait in the, in the NHS and if you it's especially uncomfortable to wait there when you're either in pain or worried about you know what could be wrong with you you're um, you're really in probably one of the worst states you're going to be in uh, just in general and it's it's just not pleasant to have to wait somewhere that is uncomfortable and uh, and dirty and I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure it's not actually unhygienic I'm, I'm pretty sure they keep it uh, clean you know to a hygienic standard um, but all the same I it's just not a pleasant place to be and that includes the places where they actually treat you as well uh, where you finally do get to see a doctor and on top of that maybe this just sounds like uh, some minor complaints but overall the uh, well I'll just talk you through what what happened to me and some of the complaints that I had um, the reason I went there like I said is because I called um, 111, which is not the same as 999, it's not an emergency number, it's the number you call when you just want advice, if you want to talk to, it's not a doctor, it's just a, uh, a, a phone service that will tell you whether you whether you should be worried or not, basically you tell them what your symptoms are, it's kind of like a WebMD kind of deal, it's just like a, a very brief diagnosis to see like is this something you should be worried about, do you need to go to the pharmacist, do you need to go to the doctor, that sort of thing. I actually like the 111 service, uh, they were very helpful and they put me through to a, a GP, an actual qualified doctor to talk through uh, what happened. 
and so I gave them all of my details. I talked through everything and they told me that they had informed the hospital that I was going to be turning up. Uh, but when I arrived, I was asked over and over again by multiple members of staff, every person I talked to asked me what my symptoms were, what had been happening to me. And I had to describe it over and over again. And it was just very frustrating. Again, it's not, it's a minor complaint, right? But to me, it seems symptomatic of a bigger uh, information flow problem. Uh, I really didn't have much confidence that they were really keeping track of me in a in a in any meaningful way. I was just sort of being passed around, and uh, the same thing happened when I uh, the first person I talked to asked for a urine sample. They gave me this um, they gave me this cup and you know told me where the bathroom was. Uh, but the the cup was not a it was not a it was not a cup. It was a plastic bowl in a plastic bag, like, you know, one of those sealed blister pack bags. So it was just a, it was just a bowl with no lid. So I had to take that, it was fairly easy to pee into because it, was, it had a large opening. But once I'd finished, there was really nothing to do with it. I just sort of had to, like, I just had to carry it around. And I, I put it back in the bag so that it wouldn't, like, smell, right? I'm sorry to gross you out, but, right, urine has a smell. I didn't want it to. I didn't want other people sitting near me in the waiting room to smell it because the, I didn't, there was no one to give it to. I just had to hold it. Yeah, I put it in this bag to stop the the fumes coming off it. And I I couldn't believe that it's just such a stupid problem, right? Like a lot of the problems of the NHS, people like everybody in the UK acknowledges that it's bad, right? Like that that the A and E is bad and that it needs to get better. The only difference is that a lot of people is like the solution and uh, I should say I should have said right at the top of this that a lot of people in the UK whether they're conservative or um, or liberal labor conservative whatever political party you support people are pretty universally in favor of the NHS to the point where I'm somewhat nervous that I'm going to be losing a lot of UK subscribers from making this video um, it's it's sort of sacrilegious to to criticise the NHS, or rather to criticise it in any way than other to say that it other than to say that it needs more money, which is usually the solution, right? That people quote these problems of the NHS, and it's usually because they're asking for more. They want the NHS to have more funding, for more money, more nurses, more doctors, and yeah, that would probably help. But to me, this seems like a bigger problem than that. This is a problem of the actual service the, the the information flow like what like there's really no need for someone to pee into a into a cup with no lid right that's i'm sure like that's not what they normally do there must be a that must be done for some reason either they ran out of the, the lid cups or something like a, a cup with a lid is not cost much more than a cup without a lid than just this bowl that I was given like that's not that's not a cost issue right that's either a supply chain issue or just some kind of weird process issue that's it's going on same thing with the information it would actually save the NHS money if they could if, if they didn't have to take so long processing me because I was repeating myself all the time they could get me through faster and take up less of everybody's time but instead it's costing them money because they're inefficient they're, they're asking me the same questions over and over again and after I that's where I was going with my key story is that after I gave them the, the urine sample, every person I asked, I talked to after that, as I was being passed around, explaining the same thing over and over again, everybody asked me for a urine sample. I kept telling them I've already done it. I mean, fair enough, they want to, they want to make sure they've definitely got it, although I actually don't know what they did with it. I don't know, they didn't tell me the results of the test or anything. And then when I, when I left, um, I, I went home and I got a call, uh, was it the next day, a few hours later? I don't remember. I got, I got a call after I got home. Um, and they said that they should have taken a blood sample, and they didn't. And I had to go back the next day. I had to take time off work to go back to the hospital just so they could take a little bit of blood, which they should have done. They knew that they should have done it when I was in A&E, and they didn't. And I guess that's not that's not a money problem right again that's inefficient that, that's actually spending more money on me than they would have had to if i'd just come in initially they, it's it takes more money for me to then meet a new uh, you know nurse uh, or healthcare assistant to take the blood than it would have if they'd just taken it at when i was already there sitting in the in the room
Now this game, this, uh, <laughs> this video is getting uh, over 10 minutes already, but um, I, my, my point is there's there's a problem with the NHS, and I'm not I'm not going to say that it definitely needs to be completely dissolved. I'm not, although I am against it in principle, I I do recognise that I don't really have a solution that is. I can't guarantee that whatever solution I have, just leave it to the free market or other, I cannot guarantee that that would be better than what there is. But I just want to make the point that there, there, there could be a better way. And the idea that the, this is the only way to do it, this is the best way to get healthcare to, to, to lots of people, to poor people, to the people who need it, I just, I, I don't think that's true. I think there must be, there must be better ways, right? And I'm I'm not here complaining about how my taxes go towards the um, healthcare for, for poor people. I'm not. I, I know that other people are going to hear me complaining about the NHS, and they're going to people in the UK. What they're going to hear is I'm selfish. <laughs> I don't want my money to help the people who who are poor and who need it. But that's that's not <laughs> that's not what I'm here to talk about. The NHS, like if or just healthcare in general in the UK, if it was better, it would be better for everyone. And what what I would like to suggest is that perhaps if it was left to the free market, or if there was uh, maybe even healthcare, um, health, health insurance, um, health insurance vouchers, the same way that uh, education vouchers have been proposed to solve education crisis, it's possible that instead of giving people a free health insurance giving them vouchers so giving vouchers to the poorest people so that they can buy their own health insurance would promote uh, would promote competition in the market and it would actually improve the service it might even make it make it cheaper um, people look at how expensive health insurance is now and they assume that is how expensive it would be if there were no NHS or if there were no Medicare, Medicaid in the, in the US. But uh, that's actually not the case. The, um, it's, uh, it's a general principle of, of economics that when the government gets involved in a business, it makes it, uh, it makes it less easy for other companies to compete, meaning that the companies that are competing with, um, with the government have to make their products more expensive uh, to, just to... It's, it's kind of confusing, I won't go into it now, uh, it's, it's an interesting principle, but that, that is the idea that the, yeah, I, I believe, although I, I can't tell you, I can't sit here and tell you that I know for sure that it would be cheaper, but I, I believe it would be better for everybody if, if healthcare was done on the free market and if perhaps the, the poorest of the poor, people who cannot afford health insurance, could be either given, either given um, uh, a level of health insurance like uh, like America does with um, I can't remember if it's Medicare or Medicaid that goes for for the poor, but um, or the, the healthcare voucher system. But I yeah I'm you know what do I know right? Like I'm a, I, I have a, a bachelor's degree in engineering and I'm you know I'm I'm 20 something years old. So obviously I don't have the solutions. I'm not here telling you this is the way it has to be done and this would be better. I'm just, I'm just frustrated that the NHS is so obviously inefficient and the proposed solution for that, whether it's coming from the left or the right in the UK, is always to give it more funding. But giving something more money does not make it more efficient. In fact, it could even make it less efficient with the money that is being given might be used even less efficiently. Um, I guess uh, well, this video is getting long enough already, so I'm just going to uh, end it there. I'm sorry if you're from the UK and I'm I'm triggering you. Uh, I I really do want a good quality of healthcare for for the poor people. That's why I'm talking about this. Uh, rich people they they go private and they they can afford to spend the the higher fees and they uh, they get a good quality of care either way. I don't really mind that. I mean, it would be good for everybody if it was cheaper, but mostly it would be good for for the poor. So. I don't even know if you can hear this over the announcements and all the sounds, so uh, I, I'll upload it anyway and uh, I hope you can do your best to understand what I'm saying. Um, thank you very much for watching, I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon.